وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول Now inshallah ta'ala I'm going to go into the fourth uh, thing that shows us or a fourth form of ibadah of the Salaf al-Salih, the pious predecessors. These men and these women were amazing when it came to ibadat and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing as they were commanded. Inshallah ta'ala this segment I want to speak about how they were fi majali sadaqati wal ihsani ila al-muhtajin. How were they in terms of sadaqah, giving? Giving to the people who are in need of it. How were they like? Inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to give you a, a story of a powerful and great and noble companion. When the ayah came down, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ That you're not going to reach, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ You're not going to reach righteousness. حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا Until you give that which you love. You give from your most dearest of wealth. That's when you're going to reach al-bir, piety and nobility and excellence. When this ayah came down, it affected a companion, a noble companion. His name is Abu Talha. Abu Talha, by the way, my beloved brothers and sisters, he married the mother of Anas ibn Mari, Umm Sulaim. And Umm Sulaim, she conditioned Abu Talha, Abu Talha, was not a Muslim at that time. He was a disbeliever. He came to Umm Sulaim and he said to Umm Sulaim, I want to get married to you. She said to him, you're not a Muslim. And I'm a, a Muslim lady. Because she's held onto her identity and her religion. So I'm a Muslim lady. And she said, you're a non-Muslim. But that said, you're a great man, Abu Talha. You're not a man that can be forsaken, a man who could be rejected. But the problem here is you're not a Muslim. Abu Talha said, what does it take for me to be a Muslim? She told him what to say. Or she took, took him to the Prophet والسلام, and he took his shahada and she said, is, your Islam is my dowry. And he took Islam. Abu Talha was a noble companion. The same companion, Abu Talha, he had in the city of Medina a garden that was known. And it was ma'roof. Everyone knew the garden of Abu Talha. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And it used to be called Bayraha. Bayraha was the garden of Abu Talha. It was ma'roof. Everyone knew it. When the ayah came down, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You're not going to reach piety until you give that which you love. Abu Talha, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَذَكَرَ لَهُ And he told the Prophet أَنَّ أَحَبَّ أَمْوَالِهِ إِلَيْهِ Bayraha. He came to the Prophet and he said to the Prophet, O oh, Messenger of Allah, the most beloved thing to me is my garden, Bayraha. That's my, my most beloved. And the ayah said, Hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibbun. Until you give out from your most beloved of wealth. He said, the thing that's most beloved to me, O oh, Messenger of Allah, is that garden. Ij'alha, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, make it. Ij'alha, Ya Rasulullah, haythu arakallah. Place that wealth in wherever Allah instructs you to do it. It's, it's under your, your instruction now. It's, I've passed it over to you. It's yours, O Messenger of Allah. Do what you think fit of it. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The Messenger said to Abu Talha, بَخِّنْ بَخِّنْ ذَاكَ أَمَ ذَلِكَ مَالٌ رَابِحٌ أَوْ رَائِحٌ أَرَى أَنْ تَقْسِمْهَا فِي الْأَقْرَبِينَ فَقَسَمَهَا أَبُو طَلْحَ تَفِي بَنِ عَمِّهِ The Prophet said, بَخِّنْ بَخِّنْ this is a, a great, successful trade, Abu Talha. Ara, the Prophet said, this is my opinion. I believe you should take this wealth and divide it amongst your relatives, your family members. And taqsimha fil aqrabin, give it to your close relatives. Abu Talha went, faqasamaha Abu Talhata fi bani ammihi. He divided the wealth amongst his relatives, he, the children of his uncles, he gave it to them. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said something very powerful. Radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, may Allah be pleased with Abdullah 
And may Allah be pleased with his father, Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, لا أن أعول أهل بيت من المسلمين شهرا أو جمعة أو ما شاء الله أحب إلي من حجة بعد حجة. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, for me to care for, to aid, to support a Muslim for one month or even one Friday is or whatever Allah wills for me to take care of a Muslim, whether it be a month, whether it be a Jum'ah, whether it be whatever Allah wills for me is more beloved to me min hajjatin ba'da hajjah. Doing one hajj after another hajj after another hajj. This shows you, my beloved brothers and sisters, how they were when it came to as-sadaqah wal-ihsani ilal muhtajeen. How they were when it came to giving. And how they were when it came to um, excellence towards others. And their dealings with those who are in need. Abdullah ibn Abbas is saying to you, and he's saying to me, that I be, more, more, what's most beloved to me, what I love the most, is to help those who are in need. Than me to do hajj and another hajj and another hajj. Of course, this is after he has done what? Hajjatul Islam. Hajjatul Islam is what? It's the first obligatory hajj that everyone needs to do. Now, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to mention to you another, a great imam. This is none other than Ali ibn al Hussein. Ali ibn al Hussein, as I told you, he is who? Ali ibn al Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib. He entered onto Muhammad ibn Usama ibn Zayd. Muhammad ibn Usama ibn Zayd is the son of who? He's the son of Usama ibn Zayd. Both of them are Tabi'een. Ali ibn al Hussein is a Tabi'i, and so is Usama ibn Zayd. Both of them are two noble Imams. Ali ibn al Hussein entered onto, or he came to uh, Muhammad ibn Usama ibn Zayd on his deathbed. He was sick and was on his deathbed. فَجَعَلَ مُحَمَّدٌ يَبْكِي Muhammad was crying. Muhammad ibn Usama ibn Zayd was crying excessively. فَقَالَ عَلِيٌّ Ali ibn al Hussein said to him, مَا شَأْنُكَ What is your affairs? What is it? What's up? Why are you crying for? Why are you weeping this much? قَالَ He said, عَلَيَّ دَيْنٌ I have debt. The Sahabas and the Tabi'een and the Tabi'u Tabi'een أَئِمَّةُ الْهُدَى وَمَصَابِيحُ الدُّجَى They used to see debt as something very heavy. They used to, they used to preoccupy their mind. They used to be very worried about it. He cried because of that debt and he knows he's dying. So he said to his brother Ali ibn al Hussein, he said to him, um, Ali Yadinun, there is debt on me. Come, he said. How much? He said, upon me is what? Khamsa asharata alfa dinarin is 15,000 dinar is on me. The dinar is gold, by the way. The dirham is silver. And it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. 15,000, today is hundreds of thousands of dollars. So that debt's on my neck. Ali ibn Hussein said, Hu alayya. It's upon me, I'll pay for it. Anything else? Don't worry about that money. Sorted. Consider it done. I'll pay for it. Hu alayya, he said. That wealth is upon me. I'll pay for it for you. This shows us what? How they were when it came to as-sadaqah wal-ihsani ilal muhtajeen. How their sadaqah was like and helping those in need. Ali ibn al-Hussein, something very powerful was mentioned about his life as well. In terms of giving, he was very well known for it. وَلَقَدْ كَانَ نَاسٌ مِنَ الْمَدِينَةِ There were people who lived in the city of Medina. يَعِيشُونَ لَا يَدْرُونَ مِنْ أَيْنَ كَانَ مَعَاشُهُمْ There were a group of people who lived in Medina. They didn't know where their food used to come from. فَلَمَّا مَاتَ عَلِي بْنُ الْحُسَيْنِ When Ali ibn al-Hussein died, فَقَدُوا مَا كَانُوا يُؤْتُونَ بِهِ مِنَ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ Whatever used to come to them at night, stopped. Someone used to bring them food every single night. They didn't know who it was. He used to give all these people, he used to take care of their food every single night. When Ali ibn al-Hussein died, they stopped. That's when they found out it was him. No one knew it was him. Yani they were living on it for years, decades they were living on it, his money. No one knew it was him, Ali ibn al-Hussein. He was concealing it and he was hiding it and it was found out 
when he died radiyallahu rahimahullahu ta'ala rahmatan wasi'ah Urwa ibn Zubair let's look at how he was when he came to sadaqa Urwa ibn Zubair Urwa ibn Zubair is mother is who Asma bin Abi Bakr so his auntie his maternal auntie is who Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha so Urwa ibn Zubair used to enter on to Aisha and he's the brother of Abdullah ibn Zubair that we took before Urwa ibn Zubair it was said كان إذا أيام الرطب when there were the the days of reap where people reap from their uh, their harvest and they harvest their their, their their crops and their seeds and Abdul Urwa ibn Zubair he used to do what ثلاما حائطه he will open the gates of his garden فيدخل الناس and he will tell the people come in come in فيأكلون the people will eat فيحملون and they will take whatever they want and when they would enter, he would repeat the ayah. قوله تعالى ولولا إذ دخلت جنتك قلت ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله. He would recite that ayah and repeat it as the people are coming in, smiling, happy, allowing the people to come in. The people will come in and they would take whatever they want and they would leave whatever they want. And he wouldn't say to them, "What are you taking? Leave it. That's not yours." This is the act of these great imams. They had the concept of sadaqah. They gave wal ihsan ila al-muhtajin. Giving to them was not a problem. They used to really give. And they believed that this was wealth Allah entrusted them with. And Allah is looking at them, subhanahu wa ta'ala, how are they going to use it? Where are they going to spend it? So they used to get closer to Allah by doing that. And that's how they attained the station that they attained. A lot of us, alhamdulillah, we have wealth. So we have food, we have income, have even savings. Helping those who are in need, giving them. It doesn't have to be a lot. Sometimes it's just something very simple, very small. Giving it to them can change their life. And because of that, Allah wa ta'ala will increase for you what you already have. Sadaqah does not reduce your wealth, my beloved brothers and sisters. It increases it. The scholars, they discussed, what does that mean? That the sadaqah doesn't reduce your wealth. Does it actually mean that the wealth doesn't become less? Or does it mean that whenever the wealth goes less, Allah puts in your heart double of what that wealth was in your heart, contentment? Because generally when people have a lot of money, they become content and happy. So I don't need to worry. The ones who give that contentment is kept in their heart and it's multiplied. That even if the wealth reduces, they're just content and happy. And some scholars, they say that's what is meant by it. There are a lot of people who have wealth, filled with banks. And what? It's like they're, they're poor, they're about to die, the way their hearts and minds are. They're scared, nervous. This comes from what? Because they're not giving their wealth. And Allah said in the Quran about the righteous people, We don't want to who are righteous, that's how they were. They would give and they would say to the people, we're not giving you so you can repay us back or even thank us or even show us gratitude. We don't need that from you guys. We're doing this to save ourselves from the hellfire. We're scared of Allah. We're scared of the day of judgment. We're scared of Jahannam. تتجافه means what? Their, their bodies are distanced from their beds. They call unto their Lord, hoping from Him. They call unto their Lord, scared of Him. Allah, Allah mentioned the ayah, and they give from their wealth. They give from their wealth. So this is a ibadah that the Salaf can with taqarrabuna ila Allah. They used to get closer to Allah with it. Now, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to go into the fifth, bi'idhnillah al kareem, ibadah which the Salaf used to do. The fifth ibadah which Salaf will do. And this is Ishratu Zawjah wal Ihsani ilayha. How they were towards their spouse and their partner. Al Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, Imam Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. He said, Tazawaj to Ummu Salihin. I married my wife Ummu Salih. Ummu Salih was, the, was the, the old elder uh, of the two wives of Al Imam Ahmed. Al Imam Ahmed was married to Ummu Salih, she died, and then after that he married Ummu Abdullah. 
the wife that gave birth to Abdullah ibn Ahmed ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal. But Abdullah, his older brother Salih, and between them is a very big distance, maybe over 10 years, maybe even to over 20 years. So Imam Ahmed said, Tazawajtu, I married Ummu Salih, and I married Ummu Salih. فَمَكَثَتْ مَعِي ثَلَاثِينَ سَنَةً She remained with me for 30 years. We were married for 30 years. Imam Muhammad said this. لَمْ أَخْتَلِفْ I never disputed with her. She never disputed with me. أَنَا وَهِيَ فِي كَلِمَةٍ وَاحِدًا Not even in one word. يعني 30 years, Imam Muhammad said, I am married to Ummu Salih, and we never disputed, we didn't argue over one word. There was no disagreement between us two. That's ajeeb. Anyone who's been married, who knows marriage, will understand that marriage in it is conflict, disagreements. People don't generally see eye to eye in everything. The Salaf, they reached piety even in their own households. That's what they reached. And one of their, their nobility in this, in this regard, when it came to Ishratu uh, Az-Zawjati, wal ihsani ilayha, is that they used to blame themselves a lot was one of their, their way of dealing with problems that were there. And this is totally opposite to what we're like. They used to say that, إِذَا عَصَيْتُ اللَّهَ If I disobey Allah, رَأَيْتُ أَثَرَ ذَلِكَ I saw the effect of my disobedience in my riding beast, in my wife, in my children, in my household. I would see the effect on it. And it would directly affect my, my family. So they knew, they understood, that conflicts that happen between spouses generally comes from one or both parties uh, going against what Allah wa Taala commanded. Either one of two: you're doing what you're not allowed to do, or you're you're leaving off what you should be doing. And so this shows us how they were when it came to their partners and their spouses. Rahimahumullahu jami'an. May Allah be pleased with all of them. So the sixth, inshallah ta'ala, and point regarding the ibadah of the uh, regarding the ibadah of the Salaf al-Salih is مَا يَتَعَلَّقُ بِالنَّزَاهَةِ وَالْوَرَعَ How they were when it came to taking the safest uh, in, uh, in issues. The Salaf, rahimahumullah, when there were two issues and some were saying it's halal and some were saying it's haram, they would always take the path of Abstain from it. And that's called that's called al wara. That's referred to as wara. They were people who had wara. They left many doubtful issues, avoided it, abstained from it. That's why some of the Salaf they said, Taraku kathira min al halali makhafat al haram. That they left many things which were halal because they were scared of the haram. The Salaf. This is called wara. So I'm going to give some examples. I'm going to give one example, inshallah ta'ala. Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik, who was the Amir al-Mu'mineen, uh, came to the city of Medina. And Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik, uh, his right-hand man, and later going to be his successor, is Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the great Imam, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz is not only going to be the successor of Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik, but he also is going to marry the sister of uh, Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik. And the sister of Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik is Fatima bint Abdul Malik. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik, uh, both of them, they come to Medina together. And at that time, the Umara, the Muslim leaders, when they come to a city or they come to a place, they were the ones who led the khutab, the jum'ah, and they were the ones who led the jama'ah, the congregation. Because they knew the Qur'an, they were scholars, they had understanding of the religion, that's how they used to be. So, Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik, qadima uh, ala al-Madinah, he came to the city of Medina, fasalla bin nasi bin dhuhri, he led the people in dhuhr. Thumma fataha babu al -maqsurati. And when he prayed this, when he led the people in dhuhr, he opened the door uh, of his palace, فَنَظَرَ إِلَىٰ صَفْوَانِ بْنُ سُلَيْمٍ And he saw, uh, remember those leaders when they led the people as well, there was like, they couldn't be with the people because of fear and because of them being 
leaders, they had a bit of a place where they, kept, they were kept. So anyways, what he did was he opened that and his eye caught a man by the name of Safwan ibn Sulaym. So when he saw Sulaym, uh, Safwan ibn Sulaym, and he doesn't know who he is. So he said to Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, Man hadha rajul? Who's that man? Ma ra'aytu simatan ahsana minhu. I've never seen a person whose form is greater than him. The way this man carries himself, the way he's praying and everything is. It's caught my attention. Who is this guy? Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said to him, uh, this is uh, Safwan ibn Sulaym. That's who he is. He said, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, hadha Safwan ibn Sulaym. This is Safwan ibn Sulaym. Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik said, okay. He called one of his uh, slave boys and he said, come here. He came and he gave him a bag. In it was 500 dinar. 500 dinar, brothers, is gold. It's gold. Okay, the gold dinar. That is hundred and hundred thousands of, of dollars today. Okay, 100,000 pounds as well. He gave that money to the slave boy and he said, Take it to Idfa'ha ila dhalika rajul al qa'im yusalli. Give it to that man over there who's praying. al Ghulam, the boy went with the keys, the Porsche that was given to him, and he ran and he gave it to uh, Safwan. So Safwan was praying, so he waited for him, and when he waited for him, he said, so, so Safwan finished the prayer, Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum. He saw this young boy, he said, hey, um, uh, ma what do you want? What is your affairs? What do you need from me? Why are you here? And he said, Amarani Amir al Mu'minin an adfa' ilayka had al keys. The Amir al Mu'minin commanded me to give you this bag, wafi khamsu mi'ati dinari, wafi khamsu mi'atu dinari, and in it is a uh, 500 uh, dinar. And Safwan ibn Sulaym was Laysa an alladhi ursiltu ilayhi I'm not the man who you were sent to give it to Fadhab go back and verify Make sure Fastathbit Verify who is it that you really have to give it to I think this is maybe not for me Go and verify who is it that you need to give it to Fawalla al-Ghulamu the boy took the back He stood up and he went back to Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik. When he went back, Safwan ibn Sulaiman, Akhada Na'alehi, he took his shoes straight away and Wakharaja and he left the place. And the narration mentions he left the place Walam Yura Hatta Kharaja Sulaiman min al Medina. No one saw Safwan ibn Sulaiman, he was nowhere to be seen until. Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik left the city of Medina. Hid himself, hid from everybody. Brothers, he's running away from what? He's running away from the 500 dinar that was taken from the Muslim leader. In his mind is that this money, I'm not entitled for it. There's a shubha in his mind regarding this wealth. He doesn't want to take it. He's doubtful about it. The Salaf, that's how they were when it came to that money. When it came to money, when it came to halal and haram, they were known as and they were known for an nazaha, is to abstain from those things, and al wara. And today, what we find is people really love fatwas which are easy, nice going. He makes everything halal. People like that instead of taking what the safest of paths. Inna al halal bayinun, wa inna al haram bayinun, wa bainahuma umurun mushtabihat. If you stay away from the doubtful things, you protect your honor and you protect your religion. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.